There's a very famous story about Gaynor on his inauguration day. He walked from his house on 8th Avenue in Park Slope, not too far away from Bill de Blasio's house, uh, across the Brooklyn Bridge into Manhattan to City Hall. And quite amazingly, it was the very first time that he had visited the seat of the government that he was about to take the helm of. Well, some of the people who worked with him described him as uh, a brilliant man, as you would expect for the mayor who mastered New York, but also a complete Machiavellian. Uh, he would, they would have a sense he was going in one direction only to find out after the fact that he'd been playing this complete, uh, you know, complete game with them. He was elected uh, with Tammany Hall support, but after he was elected, he he appointed people who weren't connected to Tammany Hall. See, the whole idea was if you got the support of the Democratic organization and you won, then the idea was that you listened to suggestions about who should be appointed to important positions. Not that you had to follow every single thing, but you did need to follow a bunch of them. And he didn't so much. Um, he was supported by uh, Boss Murphy and the Tammany machine, but he himself was a, a something of a reformer. So there was always a war between the Tammany and reform tendencies in his administration. H.L. Mencken had written about Gaynor when he was a Supreme Court judge, that he was a jurist of extraordinary uh, fidelity to the Bill of Rights, a, a very good and honest man. And as mayor, he really carried those values forward. Well, William J. Gaynor, Gaynor's probably greatest accomplishment, and I think most of us could endorse it, was to eliminate the so-called no-show jobs a job that is given to somebody uh, for political purposes or whatever purposes and who doesn't have to do anything. In a sense, if you'll pardon the pun, that ended up backfiring on him because one of the employees that was laid off ultimately tried to assassinate him. Amazingly, he didn't die. The bullet was lodged in his throat. And there's a famous picture of him um, after he's shot and before he falls down. So in that three seconds before you collapse. He was never sort of quite physically what he could have been uh, after that, and so the, his entire mayoralty played out in the context of this personal uh, crisis. Even though Gaynor was shot in 1910 and had this bullet lodged in his throat for multiple years, he was considered a very viable candidate for president in 1912. A lot of people had urged him to run in the election that was uh, uh, ultimately won by President Wilson uh, when he defeated Roosevelt and Taft. Gaynor is the forgotten mayor in New York in a lot of ways, and I suspect that had he not been shot, had he not had this fallout with Charles Francis Murphy, he likely would have served a second term and he would have been remembered maybe as one of the great mayors in the city's history. He's certainly, uh, for me, uh, the most successful single term mayor New York has had in the 20th century.